Hey guys, Ted Bogart here. Welcome back to The Ted Show. So excited to have this beautiful young lady on the show. It's Marjorie Sheba. She's here to talk about making a legacy of your life. And she's an author. Uh, she is so many things, but I know her as a beautiful human being who does a lot in the community and gives back a ton. And I'm just excited to have you on the show. Marjorie, welcome. How are you today? Thank you so much, Ted. I'm really thrilled to be on the show today. Love, love, love watching you having such great conversations with everyone else. So I'm doing fantastic. I'm um, off of the vibe that I'm receiving from you there, for sure. <laughs> good. Well, I want you to have a good, you always have a good vibe. Uh, yeah. Whenever I see you, whenever I've seen you, whenever I watch, whatever you are on social media too, um, you just have that uh, energy that people want to be around and it's a, it's a light. So I'm excited for you to talk about your light and talk about your book and talk about all sorts of things. But before we get into the book, especially, uh, let's learn a little bit about Marjorie. Tell them a little origin story on you, kind of your point A to point B. Absolutely. I'm happy to share that. Well, I am a business owner, a Medicare broker. So that is, that is the start uh, in my career, the last 15 years. And just before diving into that, I became a very young mother. I married very, very young. We're talking 20. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I had to be thrust, I was thrusted into this life of many responsibilities. I was, um, I had my daughter very young as well. So newly married, newly a mother. Uh, and uh, trying to finish school and also uh, launching a business career. I uh, did all that and I was able to, this was all in Central Florida. Uh, right. I had some great opportunities um, thrown my way, being a union organizer, then uh, a political organizer, doing a little bit of lobbying work, uh, even in DC, very young. And I had the opportunity to then um, move to South Florida where I saw more aggressive opportunities doing community leadership, community organizational uh, type work, which is my my background, and uh, that's where that, your advocacy spirit comes. That's from. where that comes in, uh, Ted. And I think you know, much like you, when you are naturally sensitized, you know, to the needs of others, and many of times it's because you've lived certain things, certain hardships, had certain challenges, uh, which I certainly have. Um, having, you know. I, just like many of us, there are, there are many things that will either change you and harden you uh, and make you completely cold to life and completely indifferent to, you know, anything that might pose a risk or you will be sensitized where yes. you will be made tender by the pain, by the hardship. And hopefully what that means is you've learned from it. You can learn very quickly and you will now allow yourself to extend a hand to others that you're seeing undergoing those same type of challenges. So that's the background. I divorced young, uh, not too long after that, and uh, moved down south with my daughter. And that's really where the person I am today was birthed because I had to learn, Ted, to do a lot of things, just myself and her, no family over there, and uh, limiting any time with her and a sitter. Um, because again, you know, it's just the two of us. And in that process, it's, um, and I'll share a little bit later how the book, this third book uh, came about. But that's my background and that's my story. And I've had the opportunity since then, after launching my business career, having my brokerage office in South Florida, and now having one in Orlando, um, I was able to then start to share my story on many stages internationally, uh, including Santo Domingo, Haiti, here, uh, and many parts of this nation. That's your it. journey is just, your journey is inspiring. Um, and you're absolutely right. I think that people who have had hardships or suffered in whatever that looks like in their lives, it usually goes one of two ways. They go down the path that it's very hard to come back from, or they become, as you said, sensitized. Um, and they are empaths and empathic and very much about giving back. And that's the sense I always get from you. When I when I see what you, I, I, I keep up with you, I see what you do, I see how you give back. I even see the business that you're in and the book that you have, this book that you have written. Um, you are trying to impart some of that uh, empathy and that love and that advocacy on other people. 
Uh, and that's a gift, right? That's to me, that's a gift. I love to talk to people who love to give back. And you obviously you have a it's part of your soul, your spirit, your your give. Uh, talk a little bit about the process of the book, because first of all, I love making a legacy of your life. I love that because I think a lot of people think about that either on their deathbed or when they face some kind of crazy health crisis or maybe at some loved one's funeral. And then the, a lot of times that's a fleeting thought um, and there's nothing that people do about it. But you want people to make a legacy out of it. Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. You do, because I feel that it's ultimately what gives meaning to our lives. Right. And it doesn't matter whether we become parents or whether we're a guardian to someone else or as a best friend, we all mean something to someone in our life who look up to us, who seek advice from us. Uh, who depend on us. And so I feel when we are put in these uh, types of positions, it should alert us even more to do the work that we should do, not just to fulfill our calling for ourselves, but for the betterment of others as well. And so when I think about the legacy, and you probably are familiar with this proverb that says, if we as parents have not prepared our children for our passing, then we have ultimately failed. And I remember when I first read those words, it really, really hit home to me. And then it resonated with me, Ted, because perhaps it's because of the career I've been in the last 17, 18 years, being in insurance. Uh, as a broker, I'm always facing the reality of life, you know, uh, being able to be taken away in an instant that we may be here today, not tomorrow, not sure. next week. It's not given, it's not guaranteed. So what does that mean ultimately? I was able to apply a lot of that uh, understanding when I interacted with my daughter. So she was just about eight years old when we moved to South Florida and I'm starting a whole new life with her. I would try my best to impart um, on her experiences that I've had, have conversations, get into her thought process, um, see how she, you know, how she sees life and concerns that she may have. Uh, and with that understanding, I would share with her, um, you know, the things and situations that I may not be around to see and ask her, how would you handle this situation? Everything, Ted, from rejection uh, to self-image issues to being let down by someone, being betrayed uh, by a family member, a close friend, and how she would handle that. And then telling her my advice so that she would know and not feel, I wish my mother was around. You know, I wish I knew how she would tell me to handle this, right? Where did uh, this come from on you? Where did, did Were you raised this way? Is it something you feel like you were born with? Because I, I think a lot of times empaths, people who are empathetic, it's not always their uh, thing. It's yeah. their, tell us about it. Ah, that's a great question. I, I think it's probably more nature than nurture. For me, uh, it's it's more of the experiences that I've had. Um, when you are when you've been put in positions where you you realize you are alone, or it seems you are alone, right? Alone, at least in the physical sense, right? Uh, it forces you to have to find the solutions, the answers you're seeking inwardly. Okay, or first, you know, and for me, going in, inward is actually reaching you know, out to your creator, that higher spirit, that higher power. It forces you to have to do that because you realize that you are not safe depending on another human being who's probably dealing with their own issues. And that's what it was. Third in line uh, among my, my parents' children, there was, uh, I, I probably did not, I, I certainly did not have my parents' undivided attention. And you add to that, <laughs> you add to that, that they were immigrants and they were adapting and there, there were a lot of moving parts. And so that along with other experiences that I had, I learned early on uh, that I had to be there for me. And thankfully, not with any resentment, you know, not with any pain um, that would put any outward uh, a hatred or anger towards anybody. And I'm very grateful for that, Ted. That's, that I think is why it's probably more unique to us empaths, um, where you're not holding any grudge or anger because you understand that person. You're too much of an empath to even be angry uh, 
So right. what you are not giving because you're understanding where the person is and what pain they have. So you're not selfish about that. So that's that's kind of where that came. I would say um, it's a lot more uh, nature uh, than nurture. <laughs> Definitely. I understand that. And I think it, it comes, some people come on the show and when they talk about it, uh, it's definitely they were raised in it, but a lot of us weren't. Right. Uh, so we're in spite of, or it's because it's nature and because it's whatever our gifts are. I believe all right. of us have gifts. Um, talk about though, turning this into a book yeah. because you are an author, you have other books, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this one, um, talk about the process of that, because I feel like people have ideas. They have something they want to share. They feel like they've got something on their heart, their soul, their spirit. Um, talk about the process of writing this particular book at this particular time. Absolutely. Um, so from having the time that I've spent with my daughter many, many, many years, I remember, and I talk about it, uh, in this third book, so it is my third book. The first one was a book I wrote um, on where I adapted the concept of Dr. Abraham Maslow around self, self actualization, and we went into self transcendence. So that it's a journey to self actualization. The second book is Ideals of a Realist. So always going inwards, always seeking the spiritual aspect of us, um, always around personal growth. And this third book, which is Advice to My Daughter. 99 lessons on love life success and society it's exactly that this book she was 13 as i mentioned in the book when we were having yet another deep conversation about things to be and how she would handle it sometimes it was reviews sometimes there were new topics and that particular day when we were done i think it was the longest conversation we had um she said to me to that to date and she said, mom, I wish you would put this in a book for me because I don't know that I'll remember, <laughs> that I'll remember everything. And I remember really like being struck by that. I was already an author by then. My first book had already come out and um, it, it stayed with me and it would take another three years uh, for me to dedicate the time and start putting you know, thought to paper and writing it. Then this book from, from start to finish, I worked on it for the last four years. Wow. I have a lot more than 99 lessons <laughs> to share. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah, and I, I had to condense it, uh, see to it that there were not much repetition, things I felt were core uh, to share with a daughter, a little sister. Um, and there are lessons in here, Ted, about everything, you know, from self image, understanding also that you are not what happens to you. Uh, that what we ultimately are uh, is our identity is actually always shaped by the concepts we decide to accept and cultivate within ourselves. Amen. Never what the exterior uh, wants to uh, label on us, never what someone has done to us and learning how to separate the two. Also, uh, lessons about uh, when it comes to family, that family is our first taste of society right? Some will support you, some won't, right? Uh, some will like you, some some don't, right? Uh, but that's okay, because it's not about who showed up for you. It's not about who did what. The toll is always on you to make it anyway, because we do have a direct calling, and the families we're born into, um, in part, they're there to support us, but sometimes the support comes from a, a family that's not necessarily um, flesh and bones. It's not blood related. It'll be organic in some other sense. We call that a tribe now, right? Yes, and we do. our tribe could be very much our family, if not more so. And it's okay. And, and when you're given the opportunity of friendship and support outside of your family line, be thankful for it. Embrace it. Don't still look back and say, but I'm not getting that there because what you're doing is you're reducing on what nature is making up for. It knows you were supposed to be born from that group, but not necessarily have the help come from that area. So you focus on where the help, where the support, where the love is, and you thrive. So I do touch a lot on that. Um, and like I said, it's, it's not only for a child, it's for any individual at a crossroad, starting a new career, moving to a new place, um, it goes into some really, really um, deep lessons there. Well, I want to ask you about those. As we wrap up, I want to ask you about one of those because of the 99, was there one that stands out that is was the most raw for you, the, the hardest to write about or 
the hardest to share and impart whatever wisdom you had learned uh, for yeah. yeah, well, there, there were several of those. Definitely the, the family and society one um, that came to me. And every one of the lessons, the, the terms used and the titles are uniquely mine. I ponder a great deal uh, on the title of the lessons because I wanted it to be catchy and memorable. And so a lot of that aspect uh, come across. The other lesson that is like a, a life mantra for me, and I've expressed this on many stages, it's always stop doubting and start doing. This life you have is a blessing. No one can live it for you except you for yourself. And so casting away the doubt, casting away the things that make us feel less than. Um, we're, we all naturally have that, but then you can certainly choose to put more hope in you than fear. And you feed that by reading positive words, by nurturing your body, your soul, your mind, by watching those negative self-talks that we do a lot. And then, in, you know, you practice it like any muscle, right? Uh, in a couple of months, you will see that you're stronger. And when you're stronger, things that come at you, little tuck back, little catty pettiness that people will do, uh, it just bounces right off of you because you understand how important it is that you arrive where you need to arrive at to accomplish what you've come to accomplish. It is so important because again, it's not just about our success, but others whose successes are tied to ours. Beautiful, you heard it there from Marjorie Sheba. Marjorie, tell them how they can find out more about you, how they can buy a copy of your book, download it, whatever they come in these days. It's a beautiful cover and a beautiful book, uh, but really how they can just get in touch with you and learn more about it. Absolutely, you. happy to. The book uh, is out on my website, and that is MarjorieShebaLive.com. Marjorie, M-A-R-J-O-R-Y, Sheba, S-H-E-B-A, live.com, as you see on your screen there. And you can click on the books tab and it will take you right where you can order the book. Uh, it is also available on all other platforms that books are sold. That includes um, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, Books and Books, etc. So you're able to order it there. When you order it through my website, you do get it already autographed. So it comes as a signed copy and you get the collector's edition. Uh, when it is to my site and we have the standard edition on the other platform. So that's the little special thing there because we have a little a little uh, addition in the book for those who get the collective edition. And thank you, Ted. So beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Such great energy. I just, I loved hearing your story. I think there's a lot of people out there that who have, uh, who could use what you are telling them because we don't talk about it enough mm. uh, and i am sure in the 99 there are so many lessons yeah. life lessons um and we could all use it we all we can all use it we can all use that extra help and that extra insight and i'm just thankful that you're one of those people who decided to share your heart and soul with everyone else what a blessing come on anytime y'all i want you to buy marjorie's book marjorieshebalive.com you get an autographed copy if you buy it there. I think it's amazing, Marjorie. Seriously, what a blessing you are. Thank you for being on Thank the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Ted. It's been a thrill. Thank you. Always a pleasure with you. Y'all, MarjorieSheba.com. Go there. You don't want to miss out. All right. Thank we'll you. see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.